Hi, welcome to this tutorial where I'll be walking you through the creation of a very simple 3D barrel here created for games. To create this barrel, I'm going to be using 3DS Max 2022. I have Max open and uh, I have not yet created anything. Before I do so, I like to take a look at the object that I'm going to be making and start to figure out some of the proportions and dimensions that I'm going to need. Now, an average oil drum has a height of about a meter. And if I look at this object here and I were to drag a, uh, a box around the, the segments here, I can see that the top two segments of this barrel appear to make a square along with the width of the barrel. So for me, this is an indication that the barrel is three units tall and two units across. So if I were to illustrate this by drawing, you can see that from here to here, from here to here, and here to here, I get what looks like a perfect square. And, uh, and that means that there are two units here using these ribs as a means of subdividing the barrel. So there's one, two, and three units tall. And since this is a square, that means that there's also one and two units across here. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Now, if I estimate this to be one meter in height, I'm gonna run into a problem. Uh, and that problem is that I'm not going to be able to divide that meter into thirds. And so I'm simply going to adjust my uh, assumption here, and we're going to get this down by one centimeter like that. And now we have a number that can be divided by three. So that's what I'm going to do to begin. I'm going to go into 3ds Max. Inside of the command panel, I will locate the creation panel, the standard primitives, and then finally cylinder. Once I have a cylinder selected as my creation tool, I will head over to my perspective viewport and I will drag a footprint for the cylinder on the ground, let go of my mouse, and then click and drag to create its height. Next, I will go into the viewport settings and I will maximize the viewport in order to allow me to see a little bit better my scene here. I'm gonna get rid of my boundary box and I'm going to turn on wireframe. This can be done through the rendering section here and edged faces. Now that I can see that, I can go into my properties or parameters for the cylinder and I can adjust it to match what we were seeing in the reference image. So first we're gonna deal with the radius and the height. As I mentioned, the height would be 99 centimeters. So I will type that in. And the radius was going to be um, two thirds of that, which in this case, uh, our radius is going to be one third. Uh, the diameter would be two thirds. And so we get 66 units across. Our radius is half of that. So we're going to get 33. And just like that, we've already got something proportionally that matches the dimensions of the barrel. Next, I'm going to go into the segment section here in order to get to a point where we have um, something that more closely approximates the, the structure of the barrel. Right now, the default number of height segments is set to five, so we have five polygons that ramp up the top. I'm gonna to reduce this down to three, and I now have an edge where each of the ribs on the barrel exists. For sides, I'm gonna keep this at 18. We don't really have a specific number that we're after here, and 18 is the default in 3ds Max is going to work. At this point, I've concluded using the parameters, and I need to go further in detail modeling this thing. To do so, I'm going to right click on it. And at the bottom of my context menu, I'm gonna go search for convert to editable poly. Once in editable poly, I'm now treated in the command panel to a whole slew of tools devoted to 3D modeling. The first thing I'm going to do is create the double lip that exists along the top and presumably the bottom of the barrel as well. To do that, I'm gonna enter polygon mode I will select both top and bottom of the barrel. And then I will go find the inset tool from my command panel edit polygons menu. Using the little settings button to the right of the inset tool, I can open up the inset settings and choose how wide in centimeters I would like this to go. I'm gonna set it to 0.5 centimeters as that gives us a pretty thin lip that matches what we see in the image. I will hit the check mark to accept the changes. Next, we need to drop the lid down, and I want to drop it down by about the same amount. 
I will go find again in the Edit Polygon section the Extrude button. And like before with the Insert button, I will find the Settings button and click on that. The default setting is 10 units and it's going positively, which means it's extruding outwards. So we want this number to be negative and we want it to be smaller than zero so that the shape goes inwards. Since my inset was half a centimeter, I'm also going to give this a half centimeter inset. Now again, with a positive number, the shape is coming out. So if I add a negative to this, the shape will go in the right amount and I can hit the green check mark here to accept my changes. I now have one of the lips and this is happening simultaneously on the bottom and on the top of the barrel. Next, I will repeat the process a second time. Using inset settings, the tool remembers my previous settings so I can just hit OK. And then extrude settings and again it has remembered the previous instance and I will hit OK. Now that we have our two steps, the next step along our journey is to create the two caps that live along the surface. Here, we're going to concentrate on the larger cap first, and I'm actually going to make it in the dead center of the barrel and then move it over once I've got it created. To do that, I will once again inset, and this time, instead of using 0.5, I will increase the number until the diameter of the inset polygon matches the image. I'll hit OK. I will then go to Extrude. Again, I will change the number so that we get an extrusion that resembles the cap. And I will hit OK. Now at this point, if I try to move, it'll only move that selected polygon, both top and bottom. In order to move the entirety of the cap, we need to increase our selection. To do this, in the Command Panel, under the Selection area, I will hit the Grow button, and that will select every polygon that is currently touching the polygon we have selected. Now that I have both caps selected, I will use the green arrow to move them to the right until they're in the right location. Now there is a problem with our geometry here when it comes to video game development, and that is that this top and the bottom face that we originally started with are what are called N-gons. These are polygons with more than four sides, and we can't have this on a piece of geometry. To correct this, I'm going to inset again. Here my number has gone so large that the inset has gone past the center of the cap and has come out the other side. I can drag this number down until we have something a little bit more reasonable. And you can see that if I were to accept an inset like this, not only is it going to inset, but it's going to remain an end gone. We've just made the problem smaller. We haven't gotten rid of it. To get rid of it, I'm going to accept my changes, and here the size doesn't matter. I'll hit OK, and then I'm going to go find in the Edit Geometry section the Collapse button. The Collapse will take every face that is currently selected and collapse it down to a single vertex. In this case, a point right in the middle of our caps. The next thing we need to create is the smaller cap located on the other side of the barrel. To do this, I will simply be copying the cap that exists, and this time I'm only going to do it to the top of the barrel. Now, since selecting a large number of polygons like this, holding control, can take a long time, I'm going to use a feature of 3ds Max to speed up the selection, namely, double-clicking an edge between the sets of polygons I want selected. Double-clicking will run that selection as a loop all the way around the mesh. Then, while holding control on the keyboard, I will select Polygon Selection Mode. This converts the selection from edges to every polygon that touched those edges. In this case, selecting the entirety of my cap. Next, I will hold Control and Shift on the keyboard. Once held, I will then grab the Move Transform Gizmo, and I will slide the cap over to the other side. This creates a clone of the geometry that was selected. Once I let go of the drag, we are presented with two options, to clone this as a new object or to clone it as a new element. I'm going to choose element as these polygons are going to be part of this barrel and not a separate entity. I'll hit OK. 
And then, in order to make them match the scale and size of the other cap, I will need to scale them down. I can hit R on the keyboard, or choose the Scale icon from the toolbar, and I will choose the area between the Y and X handles of the gizmo. This will scale the cap down in diameter, but not change its height. Now, I can deselect by clicking outside the model and turn off polygon selection mode. I now have the two caps built. The final detail remaining is to create the bevels that run along the ribs of the barrel. To do this, I will go into edge mode, double click to select again a ring or a loop around the barrel. I will hold control to add to my selection and double click the other edge. I now have two edges running all the way around my barrel. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to split these edges into a group of polygons. To do this, I will hit the chamfer button. When the chamfer settings have opened, I can increase the amount splitting the edges apart. Now the default chamfer is giving us an additional edge in the middle, and I don't necessarily want that. So if I go and find the third section, connect edge segments, I can reduce the number to zero and that will place no edges inside of the chamfer. Once I'm happy with the width, I can hit the check mark to accept my changes. Lastly, we're going to create the bevels now that we have polygons to do so. In order to bevel, I'm going to select a polygon. I will hold control and double click its neighbor. This will run the selection as a ring all the way around the barrel. Again, towards the bottom, I will hold control, select a singular face or polygon, and holding control still, double click its neighbor. This will run the selection around the bottom ring. Now, I will go and find the section called Bevel. This is located again in the command panel under the Edit Polygons. I will use the Bevel settings, and right away we can see that our default is not correct. By default, the bevel is using a group selection for the bevel. This means that all of the currently selected polygons are being beveled as a group. They are all moving in the same direction. This is not currently what we want. So using the arrow, I will drop down the menu and I will select local normal. This allows the polygons to extrude in the direction that they are all facing. I'm going to go and drag down our outline so that it is not as large and I will reduce the height all the way down to zero. Now we can bring our height inwards so that we get a slight bevel and I can reduce a little bit how far we're going to go in terms of our bevel. Now instead of hitting, hitting the check mark which will accept our changes, I'm going to hit the plus. This will accept the changes, but will continue beveling. It'll add a second bevel. So when I hit plus, the bevel is accepted, and you can see that it has created a duplicate bevel. Now, I don't want my second bevel to go inwards. I want it to go outwards, so I will go and find the height segment, and I will push it outwards. Now, the bevel goes out, and I can hit OK. At this point, I can deselect my faces. And most importantly, I will go and rename my object Oil Drum. And with that, this barrel is now complete and matches the details that we saw in the image.